So if you got fuel dumping out of your carburetor on your Honda 4-stroke, out of those little overflow ports there, likely your, uh, your uh, I guess your float is stuck open here. So we're taking these carburetors off. Took a series of these bolts out all the way down here, 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 and I'll back up so you can see where I'm pointing. Okay, take them all off. Undo the hoses and these linkages here and up in here. Okay, and look what happens. The whole carburetor manifold comes right off. See this? And we're about to lift it off of here. We just have to remember down here where our linkages go and which way everything's pointing. So when we put it back together, we're good to go. Folks, there you have it. Whole manifold is removed. Gasket looks okay. Hear my son in the background there. I've got the whole manifold sitting here. We're gonna go drain it. Son's mad because we're supposed to go fishing today. There you have it. All right, there's the carburetors. We're gonna have at disassembling them. We'll see you shortly. What we're gonna do is remove here. Bear with me, and around, and remove that. We're gonna move this whole plastic shroud here. Okay, the two bolts are removed. We're just going to remove the manifold. Like so. There's what she'll look like. Bolts holding this plastic shroud on. We're going to take those off. Should still be a 10 millimeter. Right, you can see I've got these all backed out. They'll literally come right out. So I think what I'm going to do is keep everything sane here. Just keep it all in order because if you're like me, it's very difficult to remember exactly where everything goes. So let's get everything in a line here, all of our parts so we know what goes where. Alright. A quick once over of all this. And as you'll see, the shroud comes off nicely. See? There you have it. Slowly remove the gasket the best you can without doing any damage to it. Best to replace the gasket, of course, if they're open. As in today, they're not. All right, folks, what we're going to do now, you see the manifold here. I just removed one of the three carburetors. And uh, basically, once you remove the gas line and everything else, um, they just pop right off because these long bolts here, right here, were what were holding it uh, tight to the manifold. So I actually called... Uh, a local sporting um, goods boat store here and it sounds as though they do have this gasket here so I'm sending my beautiful wife to go get that because uh, I'd rather not have to use uh, our TV gasket maker stay tuned we're gonna pull this thing apart and clean it as you can see that darkness on the end of that hose that was on the inside that was completely gummed up and plugged no fuel could pass that or I mean nothing. I mean I couldn't pass air through it so um, I just blew that out with my air hose cleaned it up a little bit. Also where that hose connects here see how I don't know if you can see that right here is completely gummed up. Um, so I just grabbed some model airplane stick pins that I use uh, for pinning down airplane balsa wood. I'm gonna start cleaning that out here. You gotta be real careful with this stuff but I do have some some gum out carbon choke cleaner here. I'm not going to get it on any of the rubber gaskets or anything. I'm just putting it on the metal. Uh, be very, very sparing with it. Okay, remove the little black screw out of there. Okay, sits in there. And it gave me some room to get in, clean this out, spray some carb cleaner in there so I could pass through this that used to be clogged up. Remember the clogging and the, and the gum that was in there? It's all clean and ready to go. I'll likely have to do this two more times. To the other two carbs here but might as well do it while you have the whole thing apart bam there's your carburetor cleaned put back together ready to go to number two probably gonna want to know how to get these linkages off if you get it's gonna be blurry 
if you get I'm trying to get an angle here. Okay, there we go. Right there. You have to squeeze those two little things together. Right at the tip of my nail there. I'm gonna grab this little red pointer. Try not to shake the camera. Right there. Those two little things gotta get squeezed together. And then this will pull off of here. This will pull back like this. Stand by. Okay, so I've squeezed them together. As you can see they're not sticking out anymore. And I just pull it through. See? It comes right off. And then when you now the only way now you just basically grab the carb. This tube is the only these two connections and just pull it, pull it back towards you and it'll come off the, the connector. Carb number two, we're gonna peel off. Notice the little bit of color difference there, so you remember how to put it back on in case you can't get another one. These are fine, but I'm, I'm, I have some on the way anyways. I'm just going to set it like that. The top side sticks up. We're going to go back to cleaning this one. First step is to remove these four screws. One, two, three, four. Phillips screwdriver. Make sure you don't use too small a one. Otherwise, it's going to strip it out. I just took this off. It's a screw. It was all green and nasty and corroded. Took it off. It was all gummed up and nasty in there. I already cleaned this. I forgot to hit the camera before I cleaned it. This was just completely packed with gum. Uh, I unscrewed this little one here, backed it out, cleaned that all up, and uh, we're good to go. So I'm going to have to go back and do this to the other carb. Here's what I'm talking about. Take this off. Look at how nasty it is in there. It's got to be part of the problem here. Completely gummed up. Time to go in the bath carb cleaner. Pardon my ignorance here, ladies and gentlemen, but I am just like you, having to learn this for the first time on my own here. Um, but this little screw, i it's not a jet, but I mean it's got a hole through it. I'm assuming fuel is passing through here. Okay, you can see my finger through that. You see that little peach in the middle of the circle? This one's clear, but the last one was completely plugged and corroded. Okay. And that goes right there, see, in that little hole. Where's my finger? Here, where are we going? Right there. Okay, take this cap off. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Anyway, here's what it looks like. Bam, bam, I cleaned this up. That was all gummed up. That's nice and clean in there now. Right in here, see? Anyways, uh, I wasn't going to do it, guys, but it was completely gummed, and I assume that was part of the problem, so probably a good idea for you to at least check it. Okay, we're going to pop the float back in. I did take off that thing there. That's a rubber tip on there. Um, that seats down here in that little hole, and that rubber seals that off, and it, the float obviously raises it up and puts it back down when it needs fuel. But long and short, just make sure you put this thing back together the right way and do not spray carb cleaner on that little rubber piece. I don't think it'd probably be good for it. I had water on hand here and just cleaned it as I as I put the carb cleaner on so it didn't have any actually touching it. But anyways, it's just going to seat right back down in there again. And then there's a pin that goes through here all the way past through this side. Here's your pin. I only got one hand here so I doubt this is going to work. I'll try to do it on camera. I do not have a stand. There we go. It's passing through here. Bada bing. So you should have some lift here, see? Just make sure that that little deal is moving up and down, which it is, which means we're good to go. Alright, I just took off these uh, linkage deals. That's how it goes. That little plastic thing points in towards the manifold. I took it off and I'm laying it like that with the thing sticking up in here so it just goes right back on. Alright, here's carburetor number three. So there's your manifold. Not exactly sure why that's covered in. That might be from the salt, guys. I had this thing in Florida for a while. It almost looks like salt on there. Anyways, here's carb three. I just removed the three screws, so off with the cover. Still see the fuel in here, and look at how gummy it is. Now, 
The reason that's not good is you can see where this has been sticking. That's been sticking to the top of that carburetor bowl. Alright, so we've got to get this all cleaned up, just like the other three. We're going to take this off. We're going to pull this pin. And then we're going to take this little one off again here. Bam! That baby is clean. Shiny. Now we're just waiting for my beautiful wife to get back with the new gaskets. These puppies. About two fifty a piece. The big one was, uh, I don't have it here because she took it with her. That goes uh, basically here on this manifold on the other side. That was like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. Should be sitting pretty. Okay folks, here you have it. Complete teardown of the carburetor and manifold. Starting from outward part in. Here's your three carburetors. Here's your manifold. New gaskets coming. They're on the way. Hope this was help, guys. Uh, leave me comments down here below if you have any questions. Again, I've only done this once, but I learned a ton, and if I can help you, I sure love to. First place I went was YouTube, and I didn't see anything for Honda 4-stroke on here, so hopefully this will help you guys uh, in a pinch. So all the carbs are back on the manifold. Just simply assemble them the way I disassemble them. And I'm just dropping these bolts back in here that hold the carbs tight to the manifold. Make sure your gaskets are tight. It's very, very important. They come in a little package like that, even though that one's cut out. You know, they look kind of like this one here. There you have it. Carburetor assembly, done. All right, make sure you put it on right, guys. Look. See how that shape matches up perfectly? If you put it on backwards, this will not move. Okay? It'll be tight because the plastic is going to get stuck on the butterfly. So make sure you check that because it, it'll fit both ways and it actually looks like it's on right. Now we're going to just make sure everything's tight, get it put back on the, uh, on the motor. Okay, folks, if you remember before, we had gas spewing out of these overflow, I guess you would call them valves, I don't know. Now we have none. That makes me a happy camper. I learned the hard way with my son hollering. Learned the hard way only to use this Honda approved fitting. 